When preparing the patient for a CT scan, you would want to remove all accessories, including jewelry, eyeglasses, or any oral appliances the patient may have. Next, you would want to take cotton rolls. We install the cotton rolls to separate tissue. By separating this tissue, it allows us to merge the CT scan into the codiagnostic software properly. You will see that in a later video. We recommend installing a lead apron just for patient protection. This CT scanner allows for both sitting position and a standing position. We recommend a sitting position as this holds the patient in more a stable position which minimizes patient movement. Adjusting the CT scanner up and down as the patient has the chin on the chin rest will allow for proper positioning. Using the bite stick, the patient would bite into the bite stick. There is a small V groove on the plastic bite stick that allows number eight and nine to position into. Two cotton rolls are installed between the arches. Temple stabilizers are used to help position the patient allowing less movement. By turning on the laser lines, there is the mid-sagittal plane laser that gets lined up with the center of the patient. And there's the Frankfurt horizontal plane laser that gets lined up from the tergus of the ear and the bottom of the orbital socket. Now you would go to the software and set up the patient's information. Choosing a CT scan, make sure you read your manual depending on what CT scanner you have. We are using Alpha Plus 130. It has several different options to choose from depending on the field of view you are trying to perform. You can see the sensor opening and closing. That is the size of the CT scan that is going to be performed. With Alpha Plus, it has a nice blue light that shines on the side of the patient, which identifies the different field of view. We have a high def and a standard definition mode. We do recommend a high definition mode to have your CT scan taken. You can see the blue light on the patient's left that would size it accordingly. This is a nice visual reference to see the point of interest where the CT scan is going to be performed. In this situation, we are going to maximize the field of view to a 13 by 10 CT scan. At the top, you can see different patient size. This is a medium build patient. The neat thing about the Alpha Plus 130, it has a field of view down to a 4x3. You can put it in a high definition CT scan. With Alpha 130, you can see a green indicator light means it's ready. Yellow means it's in process of taking a scan. And blue means it's done. As you can see, as the sensor is spinning around the patient's head, there is absolutely no movement of the patient. They must hold very steady. The yellow bar, as you see down low, is what the patient can hold on to to help them maintain the steadiness. Now the CT is completed. 
This is an example of what not to do. If the sensor is positioned improperly, you can see it could hit the patient. If it does disrupt the patient, it would allow that head to move, giving an improper CT. We will display and show you what this looks like shortly. Always adjust the sensor so that it does spin around the patient without any touching or movement of the patient. As you can see, we demonstrated that prior to the CT. Here's the result of what that movement would look like. You can see that the CT scan is not very clear. It's very fuzzy. This is a bad CT scan. If that would happen, please retake. Here's an example if you have the patient improperly positioned. As you can see, the whole anterior segment of the CT scan is cut off and not readable. If you see that, you would want to reposition and retake the CT. As we said earlier, you can use the scanner to take a CT scan in a standing position. You can raise the scanner up. Have the patient stand in. Grab the yellow support arms. They would position on the chin rest, also using the bite stick as we did earlier. and take the CT scan. If the patient's positioned with their feet slightly forward of their shoulders with a slight lean back holding the yellow bar, it does allow for better positioning, pulling the shoulders forward, which minimizes any hits from the sensor. A scan solutions guide is supplied by Implant Solutions. We only need this when we have an abundant amount of metal in the patient's mouth. They come in a pack of four. It includes clear bite registration material. Clear material must be used. Any standard bite registration material has a color pigment in it which blocks the CT scan. A clear bite registration does not have any of that opacity within the color pigments, therefore the CT scan does not show it. Apply the bite registration material to the CT scan. Put it on the arch that you are going to take the scan on and allow the material to set. This is this 90 second material. If you use any other clear bite registration, please check the setting times. As you can see, the bite registration has been adhered using tray adhesive. And on the scan solutions guide, it says this side toward the implant site. That was on the mandibular arch facing down. The three titanium pins, as you see, are what we use to merge into the CT scan. When using the Scan Solutions Guide, you would eliminate the bite stick and only utilize the chin rest. We still recommend placing cotton rolls to separate tissue. Patient is positioned in the chin rest. Adjust the height of the scanner accordingly and install the scan solutions guide, making sure it is fully seated on the patient's teeth. We still use cotton rolls to separate the two arches and perform the CT scan. Remember, scan solutions guides are only required to be used when the patient has a lot of metal in their mouth.
This scan solution guide allows us to merge the CT scan in the co-diagnostic software properly in case there is a lot of scatter due to the amount of metal in the patient's mouth. Now you can see the CT scan. Notice the three titanium pins that you can identify in the scan. Edentulous patients are handled a little bit differently. If you have an edentulous patient and you want to take a CT scan, we use Suremark markers. Take the denture out of the patient's mouth and apply six Suremark markers. Three in the palatal side and three in the labial side. You would prop the patient's denture up using a foam or a box. Make sure that the denture is in the field of view of the CT scan and scan the denture separately. Looking at the CT, now you can see the little white dots. Those are the six Shermark markers that can be identified. Now we can take that CT scan of the individual appliance and merge it in with the appliance in the patient's mouth. Now we will take the CT scan. Now this is a female patient. As we said earlier, any accessories need to be removed from the patient. Jewelry, glasses or any oral appliances. In this case, the oral appliance is a denture and we do need that. keep that in the patient's mouth. And we will capture a CT scan with it in. The denture still has the Suremark markers installed on them. Again, we will use cotton rolls to separate tissue. With the scan, we have the patient seated patient is inserted into the chin rest and using the bite stick. Cotton rolls are again used to separate the two arches and the centrals are positioned within the V of the bite stick. Paying attention to the mid-sagittal plane laser. And the Frankfurt horizontal plane laser, matching from the tragus to the bottom of the orbital socket. We will again adjust the field of view. In this situation, we are going to use again a 13 by 10 CT scan. As you can see, the blue light moving as we adjust the field of view. With the Alpha 130, again, we will maximize to 13 by 10. And we will perform the CT scan with the patient wearing the denture. Now you can see the post-op CT scan with the denture in the patient's mouth. Notice the white dots, which again are the Suremark markers. Now we were able to take the CT scan with the denture out of the patient's mouth and merge it with the CT scan of the denture in the patient's mouth. When exporting your CT scan, you have a few options. One of them is exporting using the Hightail through the Implant Solutions website. The Implant Solutions website you will see on your screen, www.solutionsforimplants.com. You will find the upload files via Hightail. Click on the link and select the file from your computer. 
In this case, we have our files located on our D drive. And before uploading it to the Hightail website, we're going to compress into a zipped folder. We do that so the files are sent as one and not individual files because DICOM files can go from anywhere to 300 to 500 files. Insert your information, doctor's name and email, and add any other information that you pertain important, like patient name, tooth position, implant system, and if needed and important, the date of surgery. Once the files are uploaded, they will show up as an email to the Implant Solutions staff. Another way of exporting your file is to directly export them into Codagnostic software if you have the software in your computer. You can select the 3D viewer as your exporting method that will launch the Codagnostic software. And using the DICOM transfer tab, you will again locate your file and import it into your software. Once your file is imported, you can either work on your treatment plan or send it to Implant Solutions via Case Exchange. Another way of exporting your file is to actually export the DICOM file into a CD or USB or flash drive. Your CT scanner software should give you the option of exporting it in different formats. If you're exporting it to Implant Solutions, the format needed is the DICOM format. You select where you want that file to go. In this case, we're just putting it in our desktop and selecting the DICOM file. Once the export is complete, you can check the folder and you will see that you will have all the individual DICOM files, in this case, over 500. Another way of exporting your file, if you're referring it to a different specialist, is to export with a 3D viewer. In this case, we're using the Zealous software that gives us that option. So once your file is loaded, if you need to load, you just have to find where your file is in your computer. And under the Output tab, you will save your project with Viewer. Again, you will select where you want that file to end up. We will, again, put it in our desktop.
And once the export is complete, you can open the application just to make sure that your file is there. Some key points to remember when taking the CT scan. Take your time, evaluate the scan, make sure the scan is clear and the information that you are trying to capture is present on the CT scan. Using cotton rolls to separate tissue, also cotton rolls to separate the maxillary and mandibular arch are very important. Remember we are manufacturing implant surgical guides that are precision fit. We want to make sure the implant placement is very precise. Therefore, we recommend that you take a full arch CT scan and never take partial CT scans.